Hello everyone, it's Shel C from Paper Rock TO Studio and today I'm sharing with you an art journal page and I'm using the prompt for the hashtag November Daily Art Journal 30 Day Challenge which is Tea Party but I'm also doing my monthly collaboration that I'm going to be doing for the next four months um, that's called Shimmery Art. So that's a collaboration with uh, Peg Robinson Evil of A Arts Channel and um, Ina Salisbury and so I have this pile of shimmery glittery glammy stuff over there to the right and it's from Ina so this month I'm using her stuff I don't have to use all of it I can use whatever I want and I can throw in other stuff that I have if I want to it's just that we're sharing our shimmery um, hordes with each other to do with our projects. So everyone's doing a art journal page this month with their shimmery art and the links to all three other videos will be in the description box below and um, perhaps in the iCards if I can get them in there. <laughs> so um, look for that. Go and uh, check out their pages because I'm sure everything is going to be fabulous. I mean it's shimmery art after all, you know. Fabulous. We all like our our glittery stuff don't we <laughs> so when I thought of the prompt tea party which is what is for the 11th for on our big list of prompts I thought of Alice in Wonderland and the Mad Hatter's tea party which is where Alice went when she went to Wonderland and that was a favorite book of mine when I was a child I I had that book and I read it over and over and you know it was um, just I, that I just it was probably my first fantasy book because it really is kind of a fantasy book <laughs> so that's what I wanted to make my page about is Alice in Wonderland and how she goes to this magical place that's probably very shimmery you know it's probably got fairy dust or something all over it um, in the movie that came out uh, it didn't but you know so I drew a uh, a, t a, t a table for her to sit at in a chair and I drew Alice it's outside it's not an in inside tea party it's an outside tea party so I made trees in the background and stuff like that and then I wanted to make the tablecloth patchwork um, make it crazy you know because that tea party and the Mad Hatters obviously he's mad so it's it's craziness it's um, it's not your normal Victorian ladies in the garden with parasols type of a tea party it's it's fun and whimsical and silly and so I'm using I, I drew out onto the or I traced out onto the um, some deli paper the shape of the table that I need to cover and then I'm using different just randomly cut squares from the papers that Ina sent me uh, there's a white one with iridescent glitter and then there's this blue really shimmery one that's not exactly glitter it's like it's like foil or something I don't know and then there's a jelly print and there's this other one that has the glittery dots on it and I'm just cutting pieces out and then I'm also using some different scrapbook papers that were in a pile in my room just to add more variety and to make my boring scrapbook papers shimmery I'm using the deco art media uh, glitter medium so it's it's decoupage medium with glitter in it so I'll be using that all the way through the project if, if I, I started out thinking oh I grabbed my favorite one which is the Liquitex matte medium uh, gel format and I started and then I'm like wait a minute you can't put gel stuff on here because it'll it'll dull all the glimmer and glitter and shine so then I got out the uh, glitter one that I have on my desk as well and I started using that so I set that aside to dry after I got all the pieces on and then I started to use just acrylic paints to paint in Alice I'm not gonna collage her um, a lot of this will be collaged and then some of it will just be well her, she's going to be acrylic and then the background is going to be glimmer mist from tattered angels 
just kind of combining different stuff. Um, I just, I, I had started a different design on here and you can kind of see some of the lines. I'd started making a rectangular table with a couple different chairs and I was going to draw the Mad Hatter and Alice and then I said, oh, this is going to take long enough as it is without me drawing two characters. <laughs> so I decided to just make Alice the focal point and she's got kind of a bemused look on her face like, um, what am I doing here? You know, she's kind of a little bit overwhelmed by the craziness going on and she's looking at everyone and then she'll have her tea and teapot and cake and things on the table as well. So I've got a couple, uh, I've got the portrait pink and the titanium white from Liquitex Basics. Then I've got some uh, primary Sion for her dress and then I'm using just the white and the blue mixed together to make the shadows on her white pinafore and collar. Um, this is her classic outfit that she's wearing. Um, I'm not sure she wore it in the movie. I don't know if they updated her or not, but this is definitely what she's wearing in the book, in the pictures in the book. So that's that's how I see her and how I recognize her, is having the little blue dress and the pinafore. That's an apron. If anybody's watching doesn't know what a pinafore is. It's kind of a little apron that goes over a dress. I actually had one when I was little. Had a dress with a pinafore. So then I'm uh, using, uh, I think it's ochre, to do a base for her hair. And then I'm letting all that dry and cutting out my table. Now, her hands are on the table, so I need to cut around and fit in the tablecloth. And then I cut out the other little tiny piece. But it helps to make a pattern out of deli paper and glue your paper onto that rather than trying to glue it directly onto the page when you're collaging. Um, if you need to cut around things or make things more precise, that's a great way to do it. Then just to make sure that this really, really sticks down because I put all different types of papers and different weights and thicknesses on there, I'm using a gl heavy gloss gel from Prima. I usually just use this, this to stick down beads and metal things and stuff like that, but this is great for this particular very heavy, uh, thick piece that I wanted to stick down. Some of that is cardstock weight, and then some of it's some uh, weird metal paper, and you know, you just you just don't know. So then next I'm tracing around all the other, other elements onto different pieces of deli paper that I intend to collage, and that will be the, the trees and her chair. And I'm going to do what I call paper painting on those. I'm going to do uh, little pieces of paper torn up and collaged on there and then cut out. So I'm doing the chair, then I'll do the trees and set those aside. I think I think I moved on to something else before I actually did the collaging on those. Oh yeah, I'm making a mask. So I want to spray the background before I start putting on it, anything else. I want to get that background area filled in. I don't just want it blue or something. I want it to be multiple colors because this is a an imaginary land with imaginary people and it's, you know, crazy there. So I don't want just a plain blue background. That's boring. It's not just a blue sky. It's probably some other crazy, I don't know. In my imagination, it is. <laughs> so I got out some Tattered Angels Glimmer Mists. Of course, these are shimmery. And I'm using the turquoise, the moss green, the it's orange, and I think that's party pink. And just making a random background. Kind of looks like Aurora Borealis. Except for not the lines, but you know what I mean. And then where the mask wasn't quite cut out perfectly. There's a few little white edges and I'm just using those same sprays to fill in where I know I'm going to need to have that area covered. Just using a paintbrush and filling in those areas. So then I'm just taking some of the uh, glitter decoupage and using my two inch brayer to apply it a light coat over the entire background. 
because I know that I'm going to be collaging over this and I don't want it to be moving around and smooshing and you know making a big mess so I want to seal it first. And then I set that aside to dry and I started to paper paint all my other elements. Um, the trees, these are different colors of browns and bronzes and I picked out the ones that had shimmer on them and amazingly there was a lot in my color box that are uh, made with different types of shimmery paints, copper and gold and you know, I don't know where all this stuff comes from. I just collect it, and I had a lot of little shimmery pieces, so I decided to use whatever I had, and I'm just tearing them up and making the trees look more realistic by making kind of a bark look on them. Not super realistic, but more realistic. doesn't have to be realistic because it's not the real world. And then I got out my purple color box, same thing. I'm getting out pieces that have shimmer on them. I think that that one is actually um, overspray from Tattered Angel's Glimmer Mist that I used at some point, probably to color a ribbon or something maybe, and uh, got it all over a piece of deli paper and then I just saved it, tore it up. So I'm making her a purple ladder back chair. And after that, I start to cut out all my different pieces and collage them on using the glitter decoupage as well. As far as perspective, um, I'm trying to make everything a little bit oversized in comparison to Alice because she is supposed to be a child in this story. So the tree is not not so much, but the table, um, the teapot and teacup, things like that are going to be oversized and she's going to look very small and a little bit lost in the middle of this scene because that, I think that's how she would be feeling if she went down a rabbit hole and then found herself with a bunch of crazies. <laughs> so then I, I messed around with a bunch of stuff that Ina had sent. Um, die cuts and gems and all kinds of stuff and I made a little bit of a layout for this crazy um, enchanted fairy woods type of a ba uh, background. Uh, those aren't glued down yet. First I'm doing some pen work using my Faber-Castell Pit Artist Brush Pen. This is a just the small size and I'm adding the detail to Alice to her chair and to just the edge of the table. I'm not going to do the trees in the background or anything, just um, those elements, adding a little bit of line work to make them have more detail to them. And once I'm done with that, I am going to add more color and dimension and depth to Alice by using some Posca pins. Mostly the metallic ones, but I am going to use a few of the flatter ones. It occurred to me as I was watching this that I could have made Alice completely shimmery even if I didn't have the correct pin by using my Wink of Stella brush pin which puts glitter all over everything but I forgot that I owned that. <laughs> it would have looked great on her pinafore and collar. So I added some brown Posca undertones and then a little bit of yellow over the top and then now I'm going to use the gold metallic for highlights. On her hair just to make it look more dimensional. So now it has four colors because of the ochre original or acrylic paint. And then I'm coloring her headband and dress over with uh, the metallic blue pin which makes it look shimmery and metallic. Hard to tell in the video. You can kind of see in the close-ups but in person everything on this has glitter or shimmer shine something on it. <laughs> something. <laughs> this is where I should have used the Wink of Stella instead of the white, but oh well. I forgot I owned it. And then I have the pink metallic as well to do some glittery cheeks and lips. Of course it's a big pin in a very small space, so I'm having a little bit of trouble. <laughs> And then I start gluing down all the other die cut elements. I thought this would look kind of like a floral arrangement that you would have on a tea party table, except for obviously it's not a floral arrangement. It's uh, 
swirly die cuts in pink glitter paper, which are cool. And then these other little die cuts that are cut out of um, yellow glitter paper, I thought that they looked like lanterns, although I think they're supposed to be Christmas ornaments. But I thought I would light up the enchanted woods with some lanterns, some candle lanterns. And then these circular ones, I just like them. They're some type of a turquoise or green glitter over a darker background, and I wanted to use them. So I'm going to pretend that they are um, invisible fa fairies, and all you can see is the fairy dust. There you go. And they're kind of hiding behind the trees and peeking out. <laughs> and I glued all that stuff down with uh, Aliens Tacky Glue to keep it in place. I didn't feel like decoupaging anymore. So now I'm adding some details to the lanterns uh, to make them look like they have a top and bottom to hold the candle and then a glowy sphere to protect the flame. And I'm using my black Posca pen was the only thing that would draw over that. The regular pen, my pit pen wouldn't draw over the glitter paper, but Posca, it'll go over everything. No problem. <laughs> and then I color in each lantern so a little bit of detail with the metallic Posca pins. A green one, a purple one, and a reddish one. And then the little orange flames. Just add some detail. And then I start planning out what's on the table. I've got these two big gems, a square one and a circular one, and I just thought they looked cool on the table. Maybe they're plates or something. I don't know. <laughs> and then I used a um, one of these other ornament cutout things that she sent that's mirror paper. And in the pictures, it's going to look weird because it's mirror paper, and all it will do is reflect colors back. So I didn't get a very good picture of it. <laughs> to me, it looks silver. But then when it reflects the other colors, it doesn't look silver. It just looks weird. So I cut out a little teapot, and then I cut out a little um, teacup as well out of that same paper. Just freehand cutting, nothing fussy. And once I glued that down, I got glue all over it, and then I had to clean it. But luckily, it just wipes right off with a baby wipe. Not sure how that glue all smushed all over it, but it did. And then I'm making a green polka dotted tea cake for them to eat. I don't think you'd have a green glitter polka dot <laughs> tea cake and a purple glitter plate for it to sit on. And then I do add some shimmery whipped cream later. Pretty fun stuff. So this project has been sped up and also trimmed out some of the excess bits of it that you didn't need to watch. It did take me three hours, at least three hours and something, to make this page. So it's a little bit over the top. But I wanted to make sure that I did my first shimmy pro shimmery art project really good. So I took the time. <laughs> so this Fabric Castell dimensional um, pearl glue t stuff was in one of the packages that they sent, that somebody sent me. I'm not sure if it was in Anna's package. I, of course, did open them all. Yeah, I know I should have waited, but I didn't. I opened them all. <laughs> so I, it fell out onto the table, and I'm not sure which package it was from. So whoever sent it to me, thank you, because it made perfect whipped cream for my cake. If you're enjoying this video, remember to give it a thumbs up. Comment so I know you're here. Um, subscribe if you haven't already and share if you want to. Also, be sure to go, go down to the description box below and click all the links to the other people's videos so you can see what they made. And that's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.